I think it can be uh, uh, spelled out in this way, that there was an elegance about his play. He was the great purist, the great specialist, and he had perfection to Gaelic football. I have no doubt uh, that history will uh, judge Mick O'Connell as the classical exponent of uh, the pinpointed kick and the uh, high fielding. He was a very easy type of person to play with once you understood what he was looking for. I, I don't know, he was... I never saw anything like him, but I don't think I'll ever see it again. I thought always that Kerry was a compact unified kingdom until the year 1959 and where I learned that there was another side of the story on a visit to Detroit. And on my first evening there I was cornered by a group of men whom I very soon recognized to be Kerry men and the first question they asked me was how good really is Mick O'Connell? This was 1959. And I told them my honest opinion of Mick O'Connell. But the next question kind of stunned me. Was he better than Paddy Kennedy? <laughs> and I had to use all my diplomacy at this because I didn't know where the company I was keeping at that particular time. <laughs> but I do still remember saying that for style, nothing could ever equal O'Connell. And... Our home was a two-story house situated at the top of a six-acre field with a natural pasture ground. With my brother John, the Lynches, John Shanahan and other nearby neighbours, we did not leave much grass for the cows and pass to that field. The marks left by the ball on the gable ends of the house also bore testimony to our many activities. Now watch for O'Connell's giant leap for the ball in this 1962 game against Dublin. Meant for John Timmons, but Sean O'Sheehy sees it and clears. Des McCain to Mickey Whelan. Mickey Whelan, a very clever ball, but his own man gets in the way of McIntaggart. Kevin Coffey. Mick O'Connell tumbled there, but certainly still in possession. Henry wins a free, but he certainly came down very heavily. Let's see it again. Stuart and Colm Mary, behold, come in, Captain Theory. That evening, he left behind the celebrations and went back to Valencia Island, crossing as usual in his small rowing boat. In time, he heard the special thunder of the island shore. He hauled the boat in, sheltered near a rock, and smiled to hear the sea's defeated roar. Breathing as though the air were infinitely sweet, he watched the mainland where the hard wind struck. The island clay felt good beneath his feet. 